Um, this one's fun. Okay, so Tony, can you explain why you were hesitant at first to tell Deborah about the things that were happening to you in the house? For, well, one, I thought she pretty much think I was a nut. Two, I was supposed to be the man of the house, and I didn't want to let on like I was scared or any of that. And I was, I was petrified, <laughs> I'll be honest. And part of it was, she's a, she has to have answers. And for me, at the time, it was just like, okay, if we have a ghost, I just want out. I want to leave. And he told me that before we even, we had discussions about ghosts before we even moved into that house or mm. had baby or. And so I, I kind of figured it wouldn't do any good. It would just be, if the more I talk to her about it, she's going to want, I was scared she would bring in a TV kid. show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and with my family, we permeate this town. We're everywhere. And you can't go anywhere without somebody seeing a Pikmin. You know Pikmin, work with the Pikmin. And I didn't want to be the first Pikmin, you know, in our town to, oh, he's the crazy one. He sees ghosts. So I was kind of more shy about it than she was. I, didn't, I wasn't quite as ready to come out with the, the story as she was. And you've always, Deborah, you've always been... Um, Kind of into that. I've been real, yeah. I've since been always been little. real intrigued. I, I grew up with friends that had experiences. One of my friends, um, they had a, a cabin up in Canada, and they would go up there and open it up for the season, and you know, close it down for the season. And they went and had opened up one year, and the this big tall boy huge dresser that you put you know blankets and stuff in just massive was downstairs on the first floor it took six people she said to take it up and put it in position and it was down upside down on the first floor in the middle of the room all the boards and everything were still on you know buckled up on the house so cool <laughs> yeah that's what my thought was how do you want to go <laughs> now do you consider yourself um, sensitive or anything? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. Um, the, I, I, I did, I was aware when we lived in the house of like a cold, a very like ice cold, maybe a draft when I was going up the stairs. I got that a lot. Or um, I can remember sitting down like reading with Taylor on one of my knees and um, feeling the cold on the other knee. So. I assume that that was this little Sally. Yeah, she would tell me all the time, she's sitting right here with me. And, uh, oh, but it was she's sitting the, on the lap. Sting and cold. I remember her, she would invite me, like say, uh, well, Sally, let's come here and sit on my lap, you know, the mothering type thing. And yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't understand that. I was like, oh my God, this is a ghost. I can't see it. I don't want to be around it. I don't want anything to do with it. He thought it was literally just stupid. So. It sounds like in the beginning, a lot of the things that Sally was doing were mischievous things yeah. that a child would do. Well, except for the, the well, it escalated. Uh, to the point yeah. where it started scratching and, and biting. Fires. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was just little, little childish things. That it, I remember the ceiling lights in the um, living room dining room were a big thing for me because we could sit on the couch and they, they had. Um, it was silly, fantastic. You know, the, the, the balls or whatever. Had the ball with the chain hanging. Yeah. yeah. And we would sit there and the ball would start turning slow. Like somebody had the cord. And then pretty soon it would just start whipping real fast and then just come to a complete stop. Wow. So, <laughs> especially, so or it would like bounce like I someone was underneath yeah, it, right. flicking it with their finger and it Whoa. would bounce up and down and then just stop. And the fan was on when that was happening and it would just no, stop. It could fan, be off. It could oh, be it off, could yeah, be it off. really didn't And matter. it could be on and it would go the opposite way because it would stop and go the opposite way. So it had nothing to do with, you know, right. the, the fan, the wind of the fan. Yeah. Right. Um, and I would always, you know. Oh, oh, Sally's here. And I'd be like, ah. <laughs> and there, I, there was, I was one such time. A brave person. <laughs> there was there was one time that um, I kind of nudged him and pointed it out to him, and because I didn't want to make a big deal of it, and he just he wouldn't look. And I got just up and went upstairs at that point, and I went and took a shower, or bath, or whatever, and he he would have been laying apparently on the couch. Um, and he comes upstairs, he's there at the door when I, in the hallway when I come out, and 
Charles his pants. <laughs> Turns around and says, she bit me. Look, she bit me. And I had teeth marks on the back of my thigh, and they weren't quite. Our son was too young to have teeth he at the didn't time. Have teeth. And they were. Um, they were a small set. They yeah, were they weren't like literally like, like teeth. A, a, a child's set of teeth. And I laughed. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 but I, I thought, oh my God, yeah, see what so you get funny. for ignoring her. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of little girl does this? She's got issues. So. I mean, we can we can we can laugh about a lot of it now. Right. But when it's happening. Yeah, I mean, yes, there were times that I laughed in his face, but there were times too that, you know, that that questioning, you know, just just you know that how the dog looks at you like this, and you know, it would it would bring. Up she was skeptic. I mean, she was skeptic of the stuff that was going on at first because she wasn't having the physical, and it seemed to all be aimed at me, and so when I tell her something, I could I could tell she was kind of. You know, there were a lot of times when I, my work shift, I was working nights, so I'd be home during the day and she was working during the day, so a lot of stuff in the house would happen when I was home. And so when i tell her about it, she was like, eh, okay. Well, and he wasn't getting the sleep that the one would normally get. You know, he's working the midnight shift, he gets home at, you know, six. It takes a while to get to bed, you know, and then he's, you know, he's up, you know, five hours later. Um, so he was, if, and he doesn't sleep well, to say the least. He never sure. has. So it wasn't a good sound sleep. If he got a good two hours a night, it was amazing. So yeah, he was so. sleep de deprived. Yeah. And so I kind of sat and I kind of thought, well, you know, maybe there's some of this stuff really, you know. And she, I actually question myself sometimes. I thought, you know, maybe I am sleep deprived. You know, you know my brain's and making stuff up. So a lot of it up. didn't get communicated because. It, he thought it was going to be downplayed, and yeah, I probably would have. I wouldn't have been any use telling me, basically. So. Safe to say that the house worked differently on both of us. Yeah, we went two different directions. It was. And it for, treated us differently. With the physical stuff, I was scared to death. I remember I couldn't sleep. I would have a lot of stuff happen up in the master bedroom, from everything from the bed shaking to um, finally seeing the apparition. From the woman up there and all that, and it, it was it was pretty terrifying for me. And she was still getting the see, yeah, you know, like oh, it's just a little girl, you know. And it, one time it, I got her to interact, and one time I get her to you know write something down on a piece of paper, and I was just overjoyed. And he's getting the brunt of not so good stuff. I couldn't understand why she was so excited about something that was hurting me. And that hurt me, right? Side, but uh, and there was something that was blocking me from seeing that or acknowledging it for what it was because I'm, like you said, I'm I want answers. I'm a logical person. I'm 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 always processing. I'm always like a step ahead. I'm always trying think to figure the house. Had something to do with oh yeah, I because I never questioned. I never really you. questioned when he came to me with something. Well, what was going on, or what do you think, or you know kind of rolling things out. I never really did that. I didn't take it further. I didn't watch it more. I didn't, I just, and that is, that's just, it's not me. I'm, I'm, I'm a very, give me answers. I want more, you know, to make my, my assessment of something. Right. And it, I just, that, mm -hmm. you didn't see that side of me. What was y'all's opinion of the paranormal before you moved into the house? Were you guys believers, skeptics? Did you not really even give it a thought? I mean, I was obviously believer, you were. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I can't. I, I had one little thing happen to me when I was about eleven. I saw this thing in my uh, bedroom closet. I had sliding doors, and I remember going to bed one night and uh, seeing these like white bony fingers kind of come around the door, and it slid it open just about that far. And I saw this. It was a horrible face. I still can't get that image out of my head. But it let out this laugh that. It just felt like it echoed in the room, and it, almost like an intimidating laugh, like, you know, I've got you now. And, and I just remember screaming and running to my parents' room, and they, oh, you're having a nightmare. And never did go back in that room. They could never get me to sleep back in there. I, I think the, I went in there after we were married. 
Oh, just to help when my parents passed yeah, away. Yeah, because you know, I can and remember I still you pointing to room. the room and telling me said, that That's was my room. room. <laughs> it, it scared me that bad, but even then, I still, ghosts were just something in my house. I was brought up very Irish Catholic, and we, it was just something you didn't talk about. Or, and um, if it was a ghost, it was something that didn't belong there. So I never really thought much about it till then. And, Watching the shows at the time, there weren't a whole lot of them when we first came out. I think there was maybe two mm -hmm. <laughs> shows at the time. And watching those, I would sit around. I was probably we the worst skeptic. I'd sit there and go, boy, these people are nuts. Yeah, like this, like <laughs> I feel bad about it now. Because <laughs> I yeah. imagine how crazy we look. But we don't second guess people like we used to. You know, everybody has a right to feel. Absolutely. what they feel and some of it is very real whether it's in your mind or whether it is really happening you know you have to you have, you have to figure out how to separate those two a lot of things i mean what we've gone through is yeah for it, unbelie i would not believe it if somebody told me you I, know? I would find it really hard to believe anything unless i experienced it mm -hmm. that's all right so. and things as a kid as far as like experience that you have as a kid it can be detrimental yeah. to your own life. Mm -hmm.